So I'm Tony, and I'm going to give the uh, Ruby Jam about uh, the CSV class in Ruby. In a previous life, I was extremely intimate with this class, as I had to parse a lot of various files from sources not generated by the company, effectively, which means that, uh, yeah, garbage in, garbage out, almost hourly, pretty much, that we had to handle. Uh, since this is a jam, I'm just going to go over some of the top-level stuff, kind of a 10,000-foot view of it. Um, but the documentation for the CSV class in Ruby is extremely, extremely uh, detailed. And if you ever need to know anything about the class, just literally Google search Ruby CSV, and that's the first link for you. I'll get you everything you need to know. So a very, very brief history. Back in the olden days of 1.8, because there was nothing before that, ever. Uh, CSV parsing in Ruby, quite frankly, sucked ass. It was slow. It didn't really do all it was supposed to do. Um, it didn't really validate the fact that the CSV had to be correctly formatted very well, uh, cryptic me messages, and it didn't really have that many good features. But during that time, a new gem came along called Faster CSV. The big difference between CSV and faster CSV is faster CSV was, well, faster. It also included a lot of new options for you to not only parse a CSV, but also quickly parse a tab delimited file, pipe delimited file, uh, quickly and easily write uh, CSVs on the fly. Uh, and so it was so good that in Ruby 1.9 and later, faster CSV was effectively merged into Ruby core. So pretty much CSV, we know it today, is the old faster CSV gem. Uh, hasn't really seen too many updates because it was good enough, at, it's good enough as it is. I think the latest patch to it was the ability to optionally allow a CSV that doesn't have properly escaped quotes inside of existing quoted fields to kind of work. The reason why it's optional is don't do it because it's going to just give a best guess anyway and it's probably going to muck with your data. So miles may vary, just don't use that option. So effectively, the API hasn't changed. What is pretended hasn't changed in all these years. And the dark little secret of CSV is all it is is a glorified wrapper around the Ruby file class um, with just a bunch of decorations and just a preprocessor to split stuff up on the delimiter and we basically work with arrays or other various simple Ruby objects. There are Quite a few main class level API methods that CSV offers. These are the four main ones. Uh, CSV for each, this is the primary way of here's your file, read through it line by line, parse it for me. Uh, there is CSV read, uh, pretend that doesn't exist, never use this method ever because similar to file.read, it loads the entire file into memory. And not only that, it parses the entire file in memory. So you not, not only have a big old I.O. stream in memory, you also have arrays and other arrays objects in it, which is fine for a CSV of, let's say, 200 lines. Uh, I've dealt with files of 200,000 lines back in the day. Uh, don't load that all in memory. You will have a bad time. So pretend read does not exist, use, use for each, which effectively <coughs> opens the file with a um, with a handle and will stream it line by line in so you're only dealing with that row in memory at a time and the garbage collector should clean up after itself while you go through the file. Uh, CSV open, similar to file.open, uh, you can, that's the main interface to write to a CSV file. And CSV new is the main constructor. Pretty much everything in CSV will eventually go through CSV new. The other methods are just uh, syntactic sugar and sets up, some, sets up some stuff for you. Uh, you notice that every one of these takes a options hash. Um, the options are universal across every method in CSV. Uh, the majority of them take the file path because you're commonly dealing with a file except for .new, which we'll get into later, which can take more than just a file path. So speaking of options, these this is about 60% of all the available options you can pass into this class. It's pretty versatile, uh, allows you to do a lot of different things with your file. Uh, the most common one you will deal with is the uh, 
headers option, but I'll go through some of the other ones. Um, column separation, row separator. Um, this allows you to tell uh, the parser, hey, you're not dealing with a, com with a comma delimited list or a file, you're dealing with a pipe delimited list or a tab delimited list or God help you a, a colon delimited list in your file. Uh, row separator is the uh, way to tell CSV the, uh, what each line is terminated on for your file. Screwed up that uh, note section that should be slash r slash n or slash n. Um, again, this is just a you know, simple wrap around file. Uh, pro tip, your file actually needs line endings. Otherwise, Ruby will say there's nothing in this file. In fact, the OS will say that there's nothing in this file, even if it's five megabytes in size, there's no text in this file because there's no line endings. Little gotcha there. Uh, you, can specify, you can override the quote separator. Um, com the standard is pretty much double quotes. However, you can change whatever quotes you want. Uh, converters are pretty powerful. I'll get into that a little bit later. Headers allows you to say that row one is a header row. Treat it as such. Don't treat it as actual data. Return, he return headers say it, there's a header row, but I want row one of the data to also be the headers because there's your edge case that probably one person on the planet ever needed. I've never had to use that. Uh, skip blanks, skip over blank rows. Uh, force quotes commonly is only used for writing files. They will force all of your data wrapped in quotes meaning you have effectively empty strings instead of null values. Uh, nine out of ten times you want force quotes whenever you write a file. Quite frankly, this should be the default instead of having to manually set it, but yeah. And finally, you can uh, optionally skip lines in, your, in the uh, CSV file as it's parsing by feeding it a regex with the last option listed, which is kind of ha somewhat handy if you know ahead of time what data you just want to skip over. So that's the 10,000 foot view of all the things you can do with CSV. Here's a couple of examples. Uh, the most basic one is writing a file. CSV open, you give it a file path. Uh, because CSV is a wrapper for file, you have to give it a write mode. Uh, in this case, write binary. It defaults to read binary, which means you can't actually write to anything. So I don't know why this is an optional argument, but yeah. Uh, and then you pass in your options hash, we're going to always uh, require quotes, and then you give it a block. The CSV block is pretty much the file cursor with the little uh, sugar wrapped around it. You basically just shove in arrays. Every array you shove in is a row in the file. So in this case, I'm manually shoving in a header row of head one and head two, and then just doing a quick loop and shoving in rows uh, one through four pretty much, and that is the end result of the file. Okay. Reading a file, like I said, you don't use .read, you use for, uh, for each. Here's your example file, you look over it, you get a CS, uh, CSV row out of it. Um, in this case, I am calling it inspect on it, which returns an array. Those are technically, technically not arrays, it's an object that overrides inspect as arrays. Which I will show you. Actually, no, I take that back. You will all, by default, you will get um, for each row an array back. So in this case, um, row one is head one, head two, then you have next row and next row. And so this is your, you're dealing with the raw arrays effectively. If you do tell there are headers using headers true, then you actually get objects back each time called CSV row. These are hash like in the sense that because you're telling CSV that you have headers on the first row, it will then map, basically treat it as a hash where your each iteration through the file, the keys are the header row. So in this case, using the previous file as an example, you can call row head one and you get the value in the first column back. Note that those are in fact strings even though the file looks like it has numbers in it. By default, you will always get strings back. But uh, what if you don't have headers? Well, the headers is not just a bool, you can also pass it an array. The array would be a one-to-one -one mapping of how the headers would normally be in the file if um, they were provided. So in this case, we have a file without any headers on it. 
we specify we want the first column to have a header of A, first co second column to have, have, have a header of B. We can then reference each row like that, which is kind of handy. Nine out of ten times the files you work with, you will hopefully have a header row, and you can then just easily iterate over it. But if you don't have a comma separated file, you have a tab, a, a pipe limited file. That's where the column separator option comes in. And as you can see, it properly maps and separates out the data uh, for the header row and splits them into the right cells effectively. Uh, as I mentioned before, that you always get strings back for your data. Um, what if you don't want that? Well, the converters option um, effectively allows you to uh, attempt to convert every uh, cell in the file into some actual Ruby object. CSV provides about six different options, including try to convert the data into an integer, convert, try to convert all the data into floats, attempt to parse them into date objects, never do that, but you can try to, uh, various other options. And in this case, using the previous files example, um, the value of head, of head one is actually integers one and two. Note the lack of quotes around it. So the numeric uh, converter is one of the built-in options. These are actually lambdas defined in the CSV class. Uh, Ruby has a nice little way to cheat with calling to proc on symbols in the context of CSV that will actually cause Ruby to run the lambda that is linked into the hash that links all of the default converters together and that's how it kind of works. It can take an array so you can pass in more than one converter so first it will try to convert the uh, values to numeric if that fails it would normally return the original value if, you, uh, if your converter's array has another converter in it, it will then try that converter, convert it to a Ruby object, and it will keep going down the list until it runs out of converters you specify, and it'll just fall back to a string if, you, if it can't actually convert it to an object. The little gotcha with this is con the converters are a little bit slow. If you look in the source code, like for numeric, it pretty much calls um, the integer class passes in the string, which would normally attempt to convert it to a integer, but it will actually raise an exception in Ruby if it cannot. So to get around that, they rescue that in line and return the original string. Rescuing is very slow in Ruby. Uh, normally, you know, one off isn't too bad, but when you're looping through a several hundred line file, it can get a little bit slow. So my advice to you is if you're not dealing with a if you're dealing with a large file, just deal with the strings, pretty much. Convert them later, um, particularly if you have better knowledge of what columns are what type. That way you're not relying on inline rescuing, which is hella slow. As I mentioned, the converters are lambdas, so you can actually pass in an array of your own lambdas. Uh, in this example, I am passing um, the value of the cell is passed in as value and I'm just interpolating the value and tacking on dash A to it. I don't need to rescue anything, I don't need to worry about stuff because pretty much everything has a 2S on it. So that's actually relatively quick, although you are just making a bunch of string objects. But yeah, it's a neat thing to do, why not? So that's pretty much the, uh, the simple stuff. Um, you read a file, you write a file, pretty straightforward. Um, you have your headers on row one, fantastic. You can map all this stuff, everything's great, hunky-dory. And you're then told to parse this file. Uh, we got a header row on line six. Uh, CSV doesn't give you the ability to say header row is down here. Uh, skip rows doesn't work be, uh, because it still starts parsing on line one because it's a wrapper on file. But we're given this file, we're not allowed to touch it effectively. It's sent through through like some SFTP thing that Dev DevOps had to set up because we promised the customer we can just slurp up their files and uh, run a background job to run it. So how are we going to do this? Uh, anyone have any ideas? Anyone? Preferably not my uh, previous supervisor. 
Okay, good, good. Well, the answer is in CSV new. Because CSV is just a glorified wrapper in Ruby, the first argument is actually not the file path. The first argument is an IO object. What is an IO object? Could be a string, could be a string IO object, or file handle. Pretty much anything that you can iterate over and basically get strings back, you can give to CSV new. So how do we do that then? Uh, you write a somewhat oddly written script, but this pretty much does the job. Uh, you open the file using file.open, and at the very end you close your file because you close your files when you're done using them. Uh, and we know what the header file starts, or the header row starts with. In this case, it is an account column. Uh, as long as we know that, and as long as that file remains constant, we can easily find the header row. So what we need to do, if you go to that begin in loop, which would normally be an infinite loop, we will loop infinitely, we will loop indefinitely, reading the file line by line through each iteration of the loop until we find a, a, a row that begins with the uh, character's account. Then we, now we know what the header row is. The file's cursor is effectively one line past the header row now. F the file handle has a nice method called line number or line no. And if we subtract one from that, we know we effectively now have the header row. Store that in a variable. We need to rewind the file that's currently uh, still uh, has a handle on it back up to row zero and they're going to reread it um, effectively up until one line before the header row. So now the cursor, the next thing that is read in memory will be the actual header row. Take the file handle, pass it into CSV new, we tell it we want headers, which happens to be the next uh, line in the file, and everything pretty much works at that point. You have jumped uh, the file, you have jumped the cursor down to the header row, and your rate code can work effectively as normal. A uh, little gotcha here, uh, the first section with the begin and end loop can and will raise an end of file error if you're given a file and it can't find the header row. Common practice would be to rescue that and raise a better error, um, and to yell screaming to your client that you changed the format, stop it, stop it, stop it. And to just prove that this works, uh, here's the same thing in there. Uh, spit out the account row, one, two, three, one, two, three. There you go. That, in fact, does work. And always close your file at the end of it. Uh, a couple of quick notes. As I alluded to earlier, your file must be a valid CSV file. That is pretty much to spec. There is a spec revolving around CSVs. Uh, CSV class will puke on the first line it comes to if it's not properly formatted. And I'm, by properly formatted, I mean consistent line endings. Um, but Tony, you mean your header row can have slash in and the rest of the file can be slash r slash, r slash ins? Really? That happens? Yes, it happens. Um, just because Excel can open your fancy CSV file doesn't mean that an actual real program can't. Ruby is a real program, Excel is an abomination. Uh, it allows you to cheat. So you must have proper line endings. You must actually have line endings, as I mentioned before. And you actually must have properly escaped values. Meaning, if you have a cell which is wrapped in quotes, and that string inside the quotes have their own quotes, those must be properly escaped. In CSV land, these are double, double quotes. That is a proper way to escape it. Um, as I mentioned, there's an optional flag. I don't think it's in 2.5. It might be coming in 2.6, where it can do its damn hardest to try to handle that for you. Um, at least when I was messing with the patch, which was just written in pure Ruby, um, I got inconsistent results, also known as not the data I wanted. So just be valid, pretty much. That, quite frankly, I, from automated generated reports from various clients, I would hope, you know, they will have the decency to actually write valid files for you. Um, 
CSV, as I mentioned, has a nasty habit of bombing on the first line it can't parse. So if you're using uh, for, uh, for each, looping through a file through its cursor, and halfway down the file it bombs out, your entire process is then aborted. Which is great as long as you're not looping through each file and inserting and updating rows and can't roll back. So transaction may be needed or some escape method to roll back your data or make your data resilient to half changes would be in order. And read the documentation. Like I said, it's a very, very detailed documentation for CSV. A lot of different options, a lot of different methods I didn't cover, including here's a string converted into a CSV row object for me, which is kind of handy if you want to manually parse through various stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Um, it's again, this was Miles, Miles' fault that I'm up here talking to you, similar to the previous speaker. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Begin, end, until. I've never seen that before. How common is When that's all you have, that's all you have. This is this is the equivalent of a uh, do while loop in Ruby. Don't do that unless you have no other option to go through, loop through stuff. Not, not really a question. Yeah. My favorite, my my two favorite C, dumb CSV tricks. <laughs> Uh, one is, you briefly mentioned it, header converters. Header converters are simple, so you don't have to put quotes around all the keys and they're all the Oh, keys. yeah. Um, yeah, there is a separate set of, there's a separate option called header converters, which is the same thing as converters, but for your headers. Yeah. So if your headers have spaces in them and you need to dehumanize them, throw them in underscores, and then mass assign an active record, don't do that, but you can totally do that if you want. Just take your row and shove it into your model. Um, the other one is that for each method, if you don't pass a block, what it actually results in is an enumerable object that then right. you can do map, select, everything else directly to it, especially if you have to do a couple of different operations mm -hmm. on the same CSV. Right. And I think you can do something similar to CSV open as well. Um, because anything that takes a block is effectively a numerator. I think the difference with CSV open is I think you have to, you stash it in a variable and you have to close it at the same time because, like I said, it's a wrapper for file. Um, if your file open is in a block, it'll automatically close it, else you have to manually close it yourself. I think the other fun thing about that CSV row object is that, it, it, like you mentioned, it looks like a hash, but it's not, mm -hmm. which means that is true. I think you can also access it by index of the position. Yeah. So in addition to the keys, you can also do like first, last, and zero, one. And if you don't have headers, that is pretty much your only option because you, it is in a, just a raw yeah, array when you get back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Humor me, what is the uh, repercussions of not ending with file not closed? You can get the wonderful air break of too many files open and your app not functioning. Not saying that's never happened before, but <laughs> in any in any language, you close the files after you open them. There is the Tony Sharp stare. <laughs> that's also a big question. We are having loads of conversions of Kuma will also not close threads and files and your whole thing will be down. And that's why Unicorn is better than Kuma. <laughs> <laughs> Unicorns are obviously better than Kuma, right? <laughs> You mentioned that uh, you, your line, your file has to have at least one line mm -hmm. for each. Is that also the case if you just use the key? Yeah. Um, for example, if you call wc-l on the command line on a file without line endings, there's no lines in the file, for example. And that's pretty much what Ruby uses on the low level is the standard file libraries. So it has nothing to iterate over. Actually, it would technically, I think it would work. It just will immediately exit out of the loop because there's nothing to iterate over. I think. Yeah. yeah. POSIX. Uh, file is not a file unless it has a line ending. Otherwise, it's just a vomiting. Yeah, I totally had to deal with that on more than one occasion. It's so 5 megabyte file. There's no lines. This, there's no data in this file. Send it back. Fix it. So you said it, it, it has a habit of, if it, if it bombs out like halfway through reading the file, then it sort of, you know, you're kind of stuck back to zero. Uh, yes. Uh, but how, but how, it, can you, how can you, like, can you like, trap like that one bad line and keep going? Or? 
there is a way you can't really do it in find each at that point. If you want to be able to catch it in the act while still being kind of in the middle of the loop of the file, you kind of have to open the file handle and call read line on each iteration and pass that into, I think it's what csv.build, which most of them also use internally, where you pass the file, where you pass the string with the options and it'll make a CSV row out of it. It'll try to parse that and if that bombs, you can stop that. Now the gotcha with that is that CSV, when you use for, uh, for each, will handle the case where you have, uh, you know, cell, 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 cell with a line ending in and of itself, wraps around, and now you have a multi-line string. When you're using read line, you're reading one line at a time, and then you're screwed when you hit that line because there's nothing to turn, there's no, there is a non-determinant quote at the end, so the CSV parser will bomb on that. It's like that with that. That totally also has never happened to me as well. Two other CSV gotchas. Uh, sorry, we're doing a lot of this work right yeah, now. So fine. I got stuff on my mind. Um, um, because it is just doing a file read, if someone uploads a file name that has slashes in it, it's not going to work um, because it's not going to find that file. Um, <laughs> I think you escape yeah. the file name, I think it'll read Yeah, okay. yeah you, yeah, you got to think of that to do it. Though. Well, yes. <laughs> I think there is a helper method on file utils in Rails, I think, will let you, get, given a file path, it will escape it for you, and you use that string. Similarly, if there is inconsistent character encoding, <laughs> <laughs> it will... Yeah, I'm about to say, you will similarly die halfway through. Yeah. Although, the way I, when, when that happens to me, when that happened to me, it was mostly on, I think, the Postgres side, because you were giving Postgres characters, that, so the actual query was bombing. CSV was just passing in garbage junk, I think. Yeah, at, at least at this point, maybe it's just the CSVs we're dealing with, like, it will bomb out on the CSV mm -hmm. parse. And I think you can specify the encoding of the file if you need to. In one of the options, or you can jury rig it somehow. No, do not. Oh, oh, okay, while we're here, let me just say. Yes, I did. Never, ever, never, ever, double click on a CSV and open it in Excel. Period. You open Excel, you go to data, you go to import, and you manually import it into your spreadsheet. Why, Tony? Excel can just read it. Well, let's say you have, let's say you have a file full of phone numbers, international phone numbers, that, you know, I think UK, their country code begins with zero. You don't, it's not formatted, it's just the raw string of numbers. Excel will be like, oh, I'm just going to open this file. Hey, this looks like a number. Let me convert that to a number for you. Oh, we don't need to start with zero. We can take that off. It's just a number. Save. And then your file is now completely hosed. <laughs> that also <laughs> happened. No, no, no personal experiences in these, right? Nothing. That was, a, that was a fun one off script to write to fix several, several records in the database. Anything else you want to trigger me with? <laughs> <laughs> So Tony, what if someone gives you an Excel file instead? You can't use CSV. You convert it to a CSV at that point. Also, never open and only job only Java and maybe some .NET I've ever seen properly open up an Excel file that didn't somehow hose anything. Uh, fun fact: an Excel file, the current version of Excel, it's actually a zip file with. XML inside of it. Rename the extension to .zip, double click on it, and you see like five zip uh, XML files in there. Which means whatever's reading it has to not only know how to unzip, but also load XML documents into memory, and that is not, that, that's a bit memory intensive. So don't, just don't, just don't do it. Do CSVs. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah.